So I understand that uh, Spiner has just published a study on one of the hottest areas in uh, data center networking or in the whole networking sector, uh, sort of the AI AI clusters. Um, so first, tell me, you know, why did Spiron undertake this study? What kind of study was it? And uh, please give us a couple of the highlights. Sure. So, so Jim, Spiron has traditionally pretty regularly on an annual basis done a 5G report pretty regularly. This time, you know, given what we were seeing happening across the Ethernet, you know, landscape with a rapid rate of change, right? 100 going to 400, 400 going to 800 as quickly as it has. And with the advent of AI, we thought it would be the right time for us to put out a similar market report like we've done on 5G for the Ethernet space. That was really the genesis of why we went after this report. It includes data from us, you know, talking to hundreds of customers, um, you know, whatever patterns we have seen uh, through our business and how it's been impacted by AI. So, you know, the time was now for us to put out our first, you know, Ethernet test report, if you will, um, given, you know, what we're seeing happen uh, in the Ethernet landscape. So that was the genesis of us, you know, working on this report and getting it out there. Okay. And how did you go about conducting this report? Is it a survey or a technical study? Yeah, it, it's a combination of both. Obviously, you know, we're out in the field talking to customers constantly. I mean, that's a big part of my role and my team's role. So, you know, just seeing through what cycles our customers are going through as they look to upgrade their infrastructure to higher speeds. It is a combination of what we've seen happen in the industry as well, you know, with the innovation um, in the Ethernet world specifically as it relates to AI. So it's a combination of customer research, technical studies, and also what we've been seeing, you know, in our own business as we, you know, uh, track these trends and, you know, see how they correlate to our business. So it's a combination of all three. Okay. And uh, what would you say would, would be the key takeaways or, or highlights, maybe, you know, the short list? The interesting, so here's, here's what we've seen. You know, I've been in the test industry for over 20 years now. I have never seen this level of innovation in the Ethernet space in a very long time. I mean, if you look at the amount of time it took to go from 1 gig to 10 gig, it was probably 10 years. But for it to go from 400 gig to 800 gig has been probably two, two and a half years with 1.6 terabit right around the corner. So this rapid rate of speed changes and innovation and adoption of higher speeds is something that's unprecedented. And, you know, we were quite surprised to see how quickly 1.6 terabits coming. You know, a lot of this is clearly driven by AI and, you know, what we're seeing in the AI data centers uh, and how quickly and rapidly they're being built out. Um, so, you know, that's that was really the interesting part in all this is how much AI is impacting the Ethernet landscape uh, from a rapid rate of deployment and innovation standpoint. It is the driving force behind a lot of what we're seeing in the industry right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think we, we all saw that at uh, the recent OCP conference right. and then the uh, Ethernet Alliance had an event soon thereafter. And it's kind of the talk of the town, right? Uh, the Correct. 200 gig per lane, going to 400 gig per lane, right. how fast will physics allow this to go in the future? Uh, but then there's a, also other technology evolutions, um, and it, it seems that it brings it in competition, of course, with InfiniBand. Mm -hmm. um, but but now we're seeing some of the biggest uh, clusters. I think the XAI Colossus uh, announcement from a, a few days ago, you know, that uses well. Ethernet. And so, Correct. you know, what kind of conclusions did, did Spiron come to on that question of you know, Ethernet versus InfiniBand going forward? Very good question, uh, Jim. So, you know, InfiniBand's been around a while. Uh, it was a part of Mellanox that, that eventually got acquired by NVIDIA. So it is, for all practical purposes, a proprietary technology. It's very effective in an AI data center right now because it's very low latency and practically lossless. But it doesn't, you know, scale out as well as, um, you know, it should to support these large clusters. So what we're seeing increasingly is more customers are looking over a period of time to look at Ethernet as the, the major fabric to connect these AI clusters, right? It scales out a lot well. It's an open standard. It encourages, you know, competition in that switch space. But the fact is, you know, Ethernet is not ideal at the moment uh, to be a ultra low latency lossless fabric. 
Um, so what we found when talking to a lot of customers that was that people who are looking to deploy Ethernet are doing so, but are running into a host of different issues, you know, with packet loss, latency, out of order packets, uh, because like I said, Ethernet was not built to handle AI workloads. Mm -hmm. And the interesting piece is, um, you know, the formation and foundation of the Ultra Ethernet Consortium, right? It is mm -hmm. the, you know, industry heavy hitters for Ethernet, the big hyperscaler, uh, big hyperscaler accounts, Meta, Microsoft, uh, the big Ethernet vendors, Broadcom, Cisco, they've all banded together to form uh, the UEC, which is essentially proposing pretty fundamental and radical changes to Ethernet so it is better suited to be uh, the fabric technology for uh, AI clusters. I mean, there's no question InfiniBand is still the dominant technology, right? But a lot of market mm -hmm. analysts will tell you that maybe in the next four or five years, Ethernet will become the dominant technology and InfiniBand will start to gradually decline. Um, so that's, that was the real, you know, right. interesting part of, you know, all the discussions that we've had with customers that, you know, Ethernet is a real choice these days that people are looking at as their fabric technology to connect up these AI clusters. Okay. And as they go about building out these AI clusters, then, you know, how should they be thinking about their testing strategy? Very, so, you know, a lot, of, it's interesting, Jim, right? In all the conversations we've had with customers, it's interesting to see that, very few customers actually test these days because the only way people can really test until, you know, us at Spiron put out a solution this July was to build out real GPU labs and write manual test cases to stress test the fabric. These labs are pretty expensive to build and maintain. So a lot of people were just deploying and testing in production. And when they actually deployed, they were finding all kinds of fabric issues that was causing a lot of, you know, wastage of GPU resources. So, so our recommendation is you should test your fabric topology in the lab before you deploy and at least eliminate the network performance as a bottleneck in your fabric mm -hmm. that's causing GPU wastage, right? Could there be other problems? Yes, you know, yeah. memory, parallelization, but take the network performance out of the equation as a factor that hinders, uh, you know, maximum utilization of the GPU. And that's where you know, Spiron has a solution where we now emulate GPUs on our hardware. We can emulate GPU and AI workloads on our hardware so people can test in the lab before they deploy it. Okay. One other technical item just wanted to ask you about, and that's the RDMA uh, over converged Ethernet. Um, so, you know, what, what kind of findings were there uh, in this study? And... How does that impact the testing strategy? Yeah, so so right now, Rocky or in RDMA or Converge Ethernet version two is the is the dominant transport when you're running this over Ethernet. Um, a lot of people were doing basic, you know, Rocky testing to see what you know triggers any kind of congestion and priority flow control. But our recommendation is testing just Rocky is not enough. There is a notion of a collective communication library, which is a specific you know, workload pattern that runs through an AI fabric that you also need to test because that is typically where we have seen network switches don't do well in handling the workloads that come in, causing all kinds of problems, uh, packet sequencing issues, things coming late, out of order. So it's really the communication collective AI workload patterns that stress test, um, you know, the real Ethernet fabric. Rocky is, believe it or not, Rocky is the easy part. Uh, in all this, you know, most modern switches are optimized to run Rocky, but when you throw these AI workload patterns, traffic patterns in the mix, that's where, you know, the study has shown and our conversations with customers have shown things go sideways. Okay, great. As as we wrap up here, Anakit, um, one, one more uh, thing, and that is, you know, why else should folks download this, this report? It's available for free as well, I, I, I imagine? Yes, it is available for free. You know, we, we really want the user base and, you know, our customers out there to read the report, digest it. Um, you know, it's it talks not just about the AI market, which is what the focus is, but also other parts of the market, right? What's happening in the 5G space, for example, because, you know, they're not moving to 800 gig anytime soon. They, for instance, you know, the carrier, uh, the, 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 the core carrier markets now moving up to 400. We've surveyed, you know, enterprise customers to see what they're doing as well. So, you know, we want our customers to read it, you know, get our view, what we've seen. Um, and again, if, you know, somebody has 
feedback on the report, we'd love to hear that too, right? This is the first time we've put something out and, you know, we're we're very keen to get feedback from our customer base and anybody who reads it on, you know, what uh, they liked about the report and what we can do better when we do this next year again. So, um, right. you know, good insights uh, that we can share across a broad customer base, different viewpoints. That's uh, really the value that we see that the report brings. All right, fantastic. So the report is in the um, link. The link to the report is in the description below, and uh, we hope that uh, Spirant will update us again on this um, in in 2025. So thank thank you for your time today. Thank you so much, Jim. All right, great. So let me stop the recording and make sure it's all uploaded. Was there anything else?